Today, we're brewing the Golden Sands Brews, and specifically the Golden Sands Brews Basic Lager. Now, the Golden Sands Brews have three different types of lager within them. Today, we're brewing the first one, the Basic. Now, I'm going through the entire list of D&D beers and ales, and brewing my own rendition of what I think all of these could be. The description of this is that this is the purest form of the Golden Sands Lagers. The brew did not contain any additional flavourings and had a light yellow coloration. So clean, crisp beer, light coloured coloration. So I'm going to go for a Bohemian Pilsner, or otherwise known as a Czech Pilsner. This is a very finicky style to brew, in my opinion, and I'm very excited to see how this is going to turn out eventually. Now, a bit of background to Bohemian Pilsners. Pilsners come from the town Pilsen in the Czech Republic, and that is the origination point for the Pilsners that we know of today. But back before that a little bit, because Pilsen has a very deep and rich history of beer brewing. Founded by King Venceslas II in 1295, the first official commercial brewery opened in 1307, and around this you had many guilds and artisans forming, as it was at the time deemed to be quite an aesthetic profession. In the 18th century, there was big advancement in technology, no more malting over an open fire, the Vienna styles coming out from Austria, and around 1840, a Bavarian brewer arrived by the name of Josef Gohl that was hired to teach the Pilsen brewers the lagering methods that have now become so famous in Germany. The combination of lager methods and producing clean, crisp beers like they do in Pilsen paved the way for the Pilsners that we know of today. Two years after that, the Pilsner Urkel Brewery opened for the very first time. Let's go into the actual style guidelines of the beer itself. So the appearance is that a good Bohemian Pilsner would be very clear pale gold to darker orange gold with a dense creamy white foam that should last a while. I mean, that sounds quite comparable to the Golden Sands Brews Basic. Now, it's important to talk about the water profile. Pilsen has very soft water. Unfortunately, I have not really any way of replicating this and I'm not going to go and buy 30 bottles of distilled water for mash and sponge. So instead, I'm just going to rely on the standard water profile that I have here. So what am I using for the recipe? So I'm going to use pure Pilsen malt for the majority of the grain bill and I'm going to chuck in some acidulated malt just to lower the pH a little and allow for a bit of a more crisp finish. For hops, like uh, specified in the description, I'm just going to use pure SARS hops, as that is what you would brew for a Bohemian Pilsner. As for yeast, I'm going for Y yeast, Bohemian Lager yeast. I'm going to make a starter just to ramp it up a little bit and make sure that all of the yeast is nice and healthy before I start the process. The Bohemian Lager yeast does allow for slightly higher temperatures, supposedly. Since I don't have a very stable way of keeping it low, I'm going to try and keep it as low as I can for as long as possible until ramping up hopefully it doesn't do it too bad but with that let's get on to the brew day so i'm going to be going in with 4.8 kilograms of floor malted bohemian pilsner malt very true to style there it's going to be about 96 percent of the entire grain but i'm also going to add in about 200 grams of acidulated malt just to lower the ph and that's going to be four percent of the grain bit. I'm going to make sure to stir this quite well. It's interesting making a larger batch after having made smaller batches for so long. This now feels like a humongous quantity of grain that I'm adding in. I'm going to be mashing this at 65 degrees Celsius for an hour. After 5-10 to 10 minutes, I'll turn on the pump. Now it's finished mashing, I'm going to raise grain bed and sparge with about 6.7 litres of sparge water. I'm eyeballing this completely and just going to get it to a pre-boil level of about 27 litres. The boil off should be enough to account for the rest. At the same time, I'm also going to start heating the wort immediately. This is, as I'm using ground temperature water, it's going to really cool down the wort and make it a little bit harder if I wait to heat up until after the sparge. But we're boiling, I'm going to go in with my first top addition which is going to be 70 grams of sales hops at 60 minutes into the boil. Now that is quite a huge amount, and I'm going for about 26.2 IBUs of bittering here. But since the SARS alpha acidity is 3.2%, it provides hardly any bitterness really. So I need a lot of hops for it. At 15 minutes into the boil, I'm going to go in with another 30 grams of sales hops. I'm also going to add in my immersion chiller just to sanitize it somewhat and also add in some yeast nutrient. Finally, at five minutes into the boil, I'm going to add in 24 grams of sales hops and that should provide the spicy aroma and flavor, hopefully. Finally, we're going to chill down to about as cold as I can get it. Once it's all cooled, it's just time to transfer to my fermenter. I'm using a flat bottom fermenter for this. I realize now that it doesn't actually add pressure rating, but hopefully that shouldn't be too bad. And I just won't be fermenting under pressure in this case. Once it's all transferred, it's just time to pitch the yeast. Now the yeast is Y yeast 2124 Bohemian Lager yeast. I've pre-made a starter of this. So in is going to go the starter and I'm going to leave this in a hopefully relatively cool place, about 14 degrees, just to ferment for as long as it needs. 
once it's finished fermenting, I'm going to be kegging this and storing in a relatively cold place for about a month or two. And hopefully by then it should taste really nice. So let's wait for it to finish fermenting. Right, so fermentation is done and the beer is ready to transfer and be lagered. I thought it was a good opportunity to show how I go about kegging my beers once they finish fermenting. So what I've got here is a keg that's been filled almost to the top with star sand solution. So I'm going to empty out the star sand. Once all the star sand is out and the keg is completely empty, connect the out post of the uh, flat bottom filmzilla through which the liquid is going to be pushed through to the out tube of the keg. Now out to out is quite important as it minimizes splashing as it's going to go all the way down to the bottom and fill up from the bottom up. Once these are connected and I can see nothing is happening, connect my gas to the fermenter. Now it hasn't been rated for pressure so I'm going to have to set this at a very very minimum setting. Literally the least amount of pressures I can use for. At the same time I'm also going to open up the pressure release valve just to allow the newly coming in work to push out any of the oxygen from the top. So when, once this is all coked it's literally just going to be time to let this sit for at least a month or two. I've heard stories that the beers here are different any truth to it? Yep. These beers are finer, smoother, and more refreshing than any others in the north. Go on then, but I don't fancy being adventurous. You got anything basic? How about the Golden Sands Basic? Golden Sands Basic, eh? I'll take it. Right, well here we have our Golden Sands Brews Basic, otherwise known as the Bohemian Pilsner. We had an original gravity of 1053 for this one and ended at quite low for a Bohemian Pilsner, that is at 1012, giving us an overall ABV of about 5.4%. Not gonna lie, 5.4% is not bad for a Pilsner, potentially even somewhat on the higher end. First off the bat, this is an incredible colour, it's got incredible clarity, and I am overall just incredibly chuffed with this. This is fantastic. The head is probably the best thing that I've ever seen on a beer that I've brewed myself. And it was just Pilsner and acidulated malt, so nothing weird like Carapil's addiction in this. How and why? I wish I knew more. But let's get into this. I mean, yeah, like I said, colour. Gorgeous, golden, transparent, pale colour, little bubbles rising. Oh, I mean, it just looks a treat. Well, beautiful SARS. Really lovely Pilsner malt and shockingly clear. I mean, that smell specifically is just wow. It's what you think of when you think a Pilsner. It's a really wonderful, floral, spicy, hoppy sort of feel, and then immediately followed by a really nice maltiness. Do you know what? I mean, it's just good. But anyway, let's go for that sip. <laughs> me. Jesus Christ, oh my God. Do you know what I'm going to say this? Quake can go itself. Yes, it's clean. And yes, the Lutra Quake is very, very clean, but it has nothing on using an actual proper lager yeast. The taste is magnificent. Super malty. Really nice bitterness cuts through that with the hop. It's got that really nice sort of something on the tongue. that's like sharp and really wonderful malt. And then again, some of that lingering hop. Oh, it's just amazing. 5.4% this kind of taste. Do you know what? This should be in pubs. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. The fact that I've made something like this, I'm absolutely astounded by. These are becoming absolutely fantastic. And when it comes to the summer, this will be absolutely next level. I'm so glad that I made a full five gallon batch of this. Whoa. I know I said the Belgian table beer was one of the best things, but this is also <laughs> amazing. I'd love to know what has been your favourite lagers that you have all made, or Pilsners, whatever. I know lager encompasses a large variety. Blah, blah, blah. Let me know, what is your favourite Pilsner lager-esque thing that you have made? For me, this is amazing. Although, I suppose we'll wait until next week, because maybe that one's going to be <laughs> even better. But, who knows? This, so far, oh, look at that lacing! Look at that lacing! That's just ridiculous. Look at that! Oh, pretty. 
Obviously, there's been a Bohemian Pils and not a German Pils. They are somewhat fairly similar, in my opinion. So if you enjoyed this video talking about this, you might quite enjoy the video just up over here about when I made a German Pilsner, especially seeing as that video was made using fake yeast and not an actual proper lager yeast like this one. If you enjoyed this, please do leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you thought of this video and these beers. Cheers. Thanks for watching.